Today's topic is siding and insulation. And what does that actually have to do? And do they actually play a role together? In reality is they do. What would happen if you put more money into site or insulation on your home and it actually paid for itself within five years? Can it do that? Under the right scenario, absolutely. When we go to tear off siding, some of the things we need to look at is where my dollar is best spent. Where will my return on my dollar be? And what's the benefit? Why am I stuck on insulation? Why is it such a big deal? And I had to give this some thought. See, today we've gotten complacent. We've gotten to the point that we accept what our utility bills are, when in reality is we can knock the hell out of them. Today in the U.S., we are just now starting, and I mean it's small, starting to talk about <laughs> passive homes. Some of you just went, what? A passive home, I've never heard of such a thing. A passive home basically means that that house is so energy efficient, just from the sun will heat the home virtually. In other words, a 1900 square foot house would cost you approximately $600 to heat and cool your house all year long. That's your total expense, that's a passive home. Our homes today run us anywhere from 1200 to 4000 a year to heat and cool our houses all year. But we thought this was the norm. But if you look at Germany, you look at France, everything is today has gone towards the passive home. They have gone to sealing these envelopes. When we take a house and we can seal that thing up and we can prevent the air from coming out of it, we can prevent the heat from being 115 degrees outside from penetrating into the home, that means then our cooling costs are gonna go way down. And when we reduce our cooling costs, we reduce our bill. When we reduce the amount of heat loss in the winter out of our home, we put the money back in our pocket. We can't necessarily take a home today that was built in the 1980s all the way down to 1800s and make it a passive home without an extensive remodel. It's not possible. Hell, it ain't even feasible. But what we can do is get about 70% of the way. You're just never gonna get the other third. How can we do this? Well, one of the ways is we're going to talk about insulating the outside of our homes but before we install the siding. That's right. We're going to go and put four by eight sheets of insulation on the outside, tape it, and seal this house up airtight. Any crevice coming through the wall, we're going to spray foam. And better yet, the other reason you want to hang on here, because for 15 cents a square foot, more than what I have been using for the past 10 years, I can double the R value of a typical two by four constructed home. That's right, double it so it's actually more efficient than a two by six home that we build today. That means for an additional cost of about $600, that two by four constructed home is more efficient than the two by six home that we build today. So you need to hang around to see how this is gonna go down because it is impressive. And with all these products that we start talking about, I will be putting links down there. Heck, if you got a neighbor or somebody getting ready to to uh, put new siding on their home, make sure they watch this. This is a video that everybody should be sharing because it's gonna benefit you so much in so many ways. So with that said, let's do this thing and get into it. Be right back. Welcome to Let's DIY My Home, where like-minded people are working together to tackle your project. Everything from a complicated remodel to as simple as repairing a door. That's Let's DIY My Home .com. We'll see you there. Wow, I sure think that intro needs to be a little longer so I could have ran and got a glass of water. But it's irrelevant, I'm gonna take two right now and go get a glass of water, I'll be right back, take two. All right, welcome back everybody. When we start talking about siding, we really uh, uh, need to do a timeout. That's where I always go, stop, timeout. And the reason that is, is because we need to talk about energy efficiency in siding. Now I already started this in my intro and the part of the beginning of this, but it is what it is. I'm always jumping ahead. How do they work together? Because what we're looking to do is actually stop. And the reason we want to consider siding the exterior of our home is this crap right here. Okay. Because when I come and shoot your house and it's the middle of summer and you don't have issues and I find cavities like this, first thing is I need to identify, do we have a moisture issue going on or is it lack of insulation issue? By changing how we insulate the exterior wall of our home, 
we can eliminate for sure these wall studs or wall joists. Here's one here. We've got another one right here. Here's the ridge. We can close all these things up. We've got the top plate. We have the bottom plate. We have the corner of the house showing. And it's not that bad, but we have issues. When we look at this, um, believe it or not, my home, this was my home. This was an exterior wall. You would think I've got water issues. This was on a 1930-something oh, house. It's not water issues. It is cold air coming in from the plate up the wall coming into the house. We want to eliminate these things. We don't want to see this stuff. So one of the ways we can determine if we have problem areas in our homes is we use an infrared camera. You can go to your local uh, 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 electric company, gas company, it doesn't matter, and have them uh, come out and do an energy audit. There are a few that don't do energy audits and then they would recommend you to somebody, but whoever they recommend you to, you want them to come out with an infrared camera. If they don't have an infrared camera, their energy audit's gonna be useless. Coming out and talking about windows and doors is a bunch of BS. That's not what I want you here for. I can do a blower door test and find out what that the air is leaking around my windows. And if my house is in the 1970s, that didn't answer my question because I knew already the odds of my windows leaking are pretty good. But we want to see with the thermal imaging for hot spots in the wall when we're looking out, when we're outside measuring the inside of the house. I want to see how much hot air is penetrating through the walls. Am I able to see the wall trusses? Why do I keep seeing wall trusses? Why the wall studs? I want, if I see these things, I can address these things. I can prevent the heat loss by insulation on the outside of a home. If my inspector comes out there, or maybe he doesn't, maybe nobody does have one. You can today, it has gotten so cheap, you can buy a cell phone kit Okay, whether it's an iPhone or iOS, iOS or an Android, doesn't matter. $299, you now can turn your phone into an infrared camera and you can see if you have heat loss going in your house or if you have cold air penetrating in your house from the outside. All these things can now be shown by a little device and they even have a small camera for $300 by Klein, I believe it is Klein Tools. I'm apt to get that and try it. The phone thing doesn't tr thrill me at all. <laughs> passive homes, we briefly talked about it. What is a passive home? Solar orientation. In other words, we want the heat from mother nature in the house, but we don't want the, and I struggle with this one a little bit because I'm a firm believer what comes in the home also goes out the home. If we have infrared heat coming in the home, and, it, and we're standing by a window and I feel the heat penetrating in. That's a good thing. Here's the problem. That means the heat on the inside of the house is also moving to the outside of the house. I need to study up on that more and understand that better. I need to meet and chat with a couple engineers and get a better understanding. Because I am being told down south they want to use one type of window. Up here we want to use another type of window. I'm in the northern, north central U.S. And it's cold. We go 30 below zero. Here we sell the hell out of triple pane glass. But I'm being told down south you don't want triple pane glass. And I'm not understanding that. And I need to get a better understanding of that. And then we're going to talk about that in the next series when we get into windows. I will have the answer. Okay. When we go to a passive home, then we want to start talking about heat recovery. When we seal up our house as an envelope, air tighten the envelope. That's what we're calling this. We literally have taken the house, put it in a Ziploc bag, sealed it tight. At that point, if it's 30 below zero, blowing 60 outside, we don't feel it. How many of you actually, in the wintertime, when it's really cold out, go grab a blanket to wrap up on the couch? I do it. I'm sure a lot of you do it. Because we feel the cold transferring into the home. And this is what we're going to bring to an end today. We're going to bring that to an end so we don't feel it anymore. We don't hear the wind blowing. Hey, how about the summertime for you folks down south? This works the same way. It can be 
you might have the thermostat set at 72 degrees in the house and that air conditioner is just pounding. It's running hard because the heat is literally cooking in your house. We need to stop that. We don't want that kind of heat into the home because it's working against what we're trying to accomplish, therefore raising our energy bills. So we want to be proactive when we do siding. We want to work to improve our energy efficiency. And that's what we're about to talk to. There's about four different types of products I would consider on my home today. And I know for a fact, two of them will drastically drop your utility bills to where you will see it. And they will pay for themselves over the next five years to eight years. And if your house is in the built in the 1800s, it's probably going to pay for itself really fast. I had an old farmhouse that used to cost me about 4,000 just to heat it for the winter months. Drove me nuts. When we start talking about sealing up our house like an envelope, I like what Owens Corning has done here. Okay. And yes, Owens Corning is one of the panels I enjoy using and I've used a lot. Dalboard is another one. Okay. Different manufacturers, same principle. Okay. We need to seal from the basement to the attic all the way around that house, it needs to be sealed up. In other words, anything that's penetrating through the wall, we are gonna have to spray foam it and we gotta seal it. And once we seal it, you do not want anybody, Larry the cable guy coming over and drilling holes in the side of your house to put in dish because you got pissed off at your local cable provider. Okay, don't want that. We wanna make a junction box that enters through the basement wall somewhere, Keep the cold down there if we're going to have air leakage at all, and then bring it up stairs through an inside wall. We, do, we want to leave the outside walls alone as much as possible. Not always possible, but that's our goal. But either way, here I go off in another direction. We need to get the outside sealed up, like I said. If you have a rambler, split level, doesn't matter, and your wall and your siding is literally this far off the ground, and your foundation your basement, your foundation, your crawl spaces are actually flush with the exterior wall. My recommendation is get a shovel, dig around the whole perimeter of the house as you're siding it. Tear up the landscaping. I don't give a hoot. Because you're gonna pay, it's gonna pay for itself right here. Dig down about a foot. Okay, if you got sand, hell, take it two feet. It's gonna be worth it. Get two feet down, a foot minimum. Start and then bring all your insulation board down there. Take that all the way up to the peak, to the roof, to your soffits, to your gable ends. Continue it all the way up. And every seam, every cut mark, it either gets taped or it gets sprayed with closed cell, a uh, uh, low expansion foam. Seal this thing up. That is going to be such a benefit. Now, depending on where you're at, you may be required to do tie back. Now, I'm not a man, fan of tieback by any means. But this is where it starts because we all hear about siding. We're all here about tieback. Tieback is all you need. Run down to Lowe's, Home Depot, buy tieback. Get the cheapest one. It's house wrap. Folks, this is what's protecting your structure from rot. When you pull the siding off your house, I would be shocked if the majority of you don't have rot somewhere on that house. May not be a lot, but you'll have some. If we put a moisture barrier on the home, and that's the one thing that's protecting our house from the elements, why the hell are we looking at buying the cheapest product? Don't. It's okay to spend a little extra money right here. I'd rather see you go with the cheapest vinyl on the market and put high-end uh, moisture barriers, insulation, whatever, against the the structure of your home and seal it. That'll have a bigger benefit than the siding. The siding is just designed to help give you looks. It's designed to help uh, uh, give it curb appeal, but it does nothing more. And yes, it does bring value, but I can get more value paid back in my pocket through insulation, through energy saving. So tie back 17 cents a square foot. Okay, an average roll today is 227.05. We're gonna talk about this again in just a minute. This is the absolute minimum. And today that's what home builders use. And a lot of times it'll say 
whatever, ABC seamless on it. It'll have, it could be a greenhouse wrap. It can be whatever. It's a moisture barrier. And we're going to talk a bit about this again in a minute. The next one that comes into roll is called Fanfold. Fanfold's more expensive. Tyvek was $17 a square foot. But if we're tearing off wood and it has our value of at least a half, if we're tearing off, I don't care, T111, lap, siding, cedar, uh, doesn't matter. It all has an R value. Tyvek has zero, okay? Absolute zero. So if you have an older home and you tear off siding and you just strictly put Tyvek on there, you're going to wonder why your house is cooler in the winter. You're about to get educated when you do that. It will be cold. You will notice it immediately. I've never had a customer tell me that they haven't noticed a difference, that their house got cooler. So at the minimum, you should be looking at is Fanfold. Not my favorite product, and it's because of cost. I think there's better solutions out there. You're going from 17 cents to 39 cents a square foot, but we got went from a zero R value to a 1.5 R value, and that's a 3 H fan fold product. Now, some people out there are gonna have a foil back fan fold. They might call it a P2000. There's all kinds of gimmicks and names. Don't fall for the game. <clears throat> Next step up from fan fold. Here's where we start to see a big difference. This is where you start to get money paid back. Instead of using fan fold and tie back, now depending on your city, your city might in county or township, they still may require you to use tie back. In that case, you're going to put the tie back around the house and then put the green board on the outside of the tie back. And you're going to notice a difference. I promise you this. You will start to be paid back immediately when you go to something like this. You will now start to notice that in the wintertime, you're not grabbing blankets. You're going to start feeling it here. It's going to start improving. Because we went from a 0R value or a 0.5R value on your home to now an R2.8 with this 4x8 sheet of insulation. Now, we want to tape all the seams. We want to tape this thing up like an envelope. That doesn't mean just use duct tape. It doesn't work. A lot of times when people tape this stuff, you have to take your hand. You have to rub it in. You need to seal it. A lot of times you're going to see a picture in here where the tape is flopping in the wind. What the hell good was that? You ran around, you stuck it on a couple places, but you didn't take the time to seal it. This is more important how you put this product on the home than actually siding it. You could do the best job in the world siding it and you did a crappy job. You didn't tape seams properly. You didn't seal your boxes. You literally threw all the money right out the door that you just purchased. So when we do these steps, please, folks, learn to install it properly. Take your time. I'd rather see you screw up your siding, but yet get this part right. Because even if you screwed up your siding and you got this part right, you're still going to reap the rewards. We just got done looking at an old green board. That was 44 cents a pound. Now, let's go, I mean, 44 cents a pound. Are we buying beef? <laughs> Woo! Okay, I'm getting tired. All right, we're almost to the end of this. Owens Corning, polyurethane board. XPS is really what it is. We went from $44 for an R2.8 to 61 cents. That's 15 cents a square foot more, and I virtually doubled the energy efficiency for 15 cents, folks. As you can see in the picture there, they're running it up on the outside of the wall, directly up the wall, right to the soffits. In the gable ends, we're sealing this house up as much as possible. This is what we don't see being done in homes today. And unfortunately, because we don't do this to homes today, people don't get to reap the rewards. Hey, back up. Oh, I guess I was there. Okay. This next screen, we are going to compare the two. I'm sorry. There's actually four. We just talked about three, but there's a bonus in here. And that's what you're going to see. On this particular screen, we compared the different products to a home that requires 2,400 square feet of siding. That's average today. When we go to build a 
passive home, our goal is to get it down to 1,900. My passive home is actually down to 1,400. It's about 600 square feet bigger than what I'm in right now. But I'm not going to have utility bills. And to me, that's worth its gold. Now, let's take a look at this. We initially talked about Tyvek on here. <clears throat> Tyvek to do a complete 2,400 square foot house is $408. So in other words, if you had an estimate and on siding and it was included Tyvacking and everything else, and it was $15,000 or whatever the case may be, if you're doing it yourself, your material cost is going to be anywhere from 7,000, including soffit and fascia, to 10,000. That means your tie back is going to run you about $408. If you were to switch over to 3 8 fan fold insulation, take a look at this. We went from a zero R value, we spent $400, and we get what? Zero in return. Absolutely zero in return by using Tyvek. That is money we just threw out the door. Hell, why don't you ship it to me? I'll give you a PayPal account and I'll be happy to take it to help support what we're doing here. All right, let's take a look at 3 8 insulation. 3 8 fan fold. That has an R value of 1.25. Some people say it's a 1.5, whatever, okay? That will cost you $936. It's $528 more than tieback. But yet we are going to start to receive a payback. We are now going to have some comfort in the home. What does comfort mean to you? Does comfort play a role in this picture? It shouldn't always be about the dollar. It should be about what we can put back in our pocket as well as what kind of comfort we can receive. Wouldn't you agree? So here it's $528 bet that over what it costs for tie back, but at least I'm receiving something. So I'm going to pay $1,000, but I'm getting something back versus nothing. The next step, uh, this is where we're going to start seeing money back in our pocket. And this is why I say I don't like using fan fold insulation 3 8 right here. Remember that half inch green board that was an R value of 2.8? This is hilarious because that has an R value of 2.8. It cost you $1,056 to do the same 2,400 square foot house. I now added just about an R3 to my home. And it costed me $120 more than what FanFold does. Isn't that crazy? For $120 more, I got more than double the insulation on my home. So today, as we saw, wouldn't it make more sense to bypass the fan fold and go for the green board. Half inch green board with an R value of 2.8 and taper it up, seal it up. That will start to pay you back the first winter. That will actually make a world of a difference. That should be the minimum that you put on your home, folks. I don't care if it's a house that just got hit by a hailstorm and it's only five years old. It is time right now to spend a few extra dollars and make this house more efficient and more comfortable and start paying you back. Insulation is one of the only products that will actually pay you back. And this is nowhere to skimp. I can't preach that enough. All right. If you guys are getting value out of this, do me a favor. Smack that like button. Okay. Hit the subscribe button if you find that this is very interesting and educational to you. We will enjoy having you join us. If you don't want to join us, that's okay too. Just hit the like button. Next one we're going to go to. This is what I do on 90% of my homes. The salesperson you come out should be educating you as I am educating you. You see? That way I can lay all the cards on the table here. The more cards I lay on the table here... That gives you a better decision of what you want for your home. If you know the pros and cons to each, you can make an intelligent decision. Would you not agree? All right, let's take a look at the next one because this is the product that I use on 90% of my siding jobs. I always try to do my best to talk a homeowner into this. Owens Corning, R5 board. That one actually is $1,464 redo the whole house and use that. That is $408 more than the half inch. That may be out of budget. In some cases, I understand that, and that's okay. I would rather see you go and cut back on the quality of the siding and put the money in the insulation. Because like I said before, for if you're planning on selling the home, 
it doesn't matter. If you're planning on selling the home in five years, it doesn't matter. You don't need to put the Mercedes or vinyl siding on your home. The contractor's grade here then is going to be okay. It's going to look just as good in five years the day you put it on. But what you're going to do is start reaping the rewards of the R5 insulation. And that's more important to me to give to you. Because that, especially if on a two by four constructed home, that is 50% more R value on that house than what you probably have on there right now. Especially if your house was in the 70s and 60s. They didn't have R13 back then. They didn't have an R15 as we do today. So I know for a fact, and the way we insulated homes back then, it was brutal. It was ugly. And I know for a fact, if the time I put that uh, <clears throat> Owens Corning R5 on there, which is one inch thick, I tape it, I seal it, I foam it, I tie back it because my code requires it and it ain't always a bad thing anyway, then I end up winning. Then I actually have probably 80% more efficient than what I had before. And you 100% will start recouping your cost the first winter. Now, I talked about the bonus of 15 cents more than what I normally spend and give a customer. You can actually blow this out of the water. You can blow your energy efficiency out of the water because now I can actually take that same home, the Rambler, 2,400 square feet. And if you notice right down below, I did a star. I just found this out. It's hard to stay up on cost. It's hard to stay up on where products are because the 1.5 R value to the 7.5 R value, you would think would be a substantial difference, would you not? I just found it at Menard. Inch and a half, I wouldn't go anymore. Four by eight sheet costs $20.85. That four by eight sheet of R5 is $20. You catch that? The R5 that I've always used cost me about $20 a sheet. I can actually go to an inch and a half for $20.85. That's 63 cents a square foot more. That's it. On the whole project, it's $52.36 more. That's it. And you went from an R5 to an R7.5. Even on a modern home today, two by four constructed, built in the 1980s, and you're gonna be shocked how much more comfortable it is. That furnace is not gonna be running like it used to. You are talking 50% more energy efficient than what's on there now. All right. I hope you found it educational. You tell me what you liked best about the video. I want to say thank you guys for joining me. It was an experience. This is challenging, although lots of fun. If you really like the content, consider subscribing. We'd be happy to have you join us. Ring the bell. But until our next video, folks, God bless you all. Have a fantastic evening, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.